reducing greenhouse gas emissions and improving environmental sustainability are rapidly becoming must-haves for livestock enterprises. We're seeing consumers increasingly wanting to understand more about how the food they consume is produced and wanting it to be produced in ways that's environmentally responsible. There are three main reasons why pursuing sustainability is a must-have for livestock producers. It has productivity benefits, it helps manage climate variability, and both push and pull factors are driving the need to act. As producers recognise the benefits of sustainability, rapid changes are being made to production systems. To assist with this industry-wide adjustment, MLA is targeting a 10% boost in productivity hand-in-hand -hand with a 30% reduction in emissions intensity. Potentially, it could deliver as much as $10 million to the industry or an extra $3,000 for an average cattle farm. If you can produce beef efficiently, what it means is uh, you're actually producing more beef for the same amount of, of methane. Um, so that's a, a more carbon-friendly beef production system. We're joining our heifers as yearlings, which for our area is probably a little bit different because they're only in that weight range probably from about 260 to 320 kilos when they're joined. So instead of having to carry those females an extra year in basically what's an unproductive um, state, we're actually getting them into production a year earlier. So that's, that's the big thing that's making a difference. I guess in terms of the, the push factors for a producer are really things like government regulation. So we hear a lot about carbon trading, carbon price, carbon taxes, emissions trading schemes. Um, really what that is about is, is about incentivising businesses to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions and adopt new ways of producing, whether it's beef or you know, aluminium cans or energy, uh, you know, produce those things in a way that reduces their emissions. We're seeing a wide variety of countries, both developed and developing, uh, introducing um, these regulatory schemes to price emissions and create incentives to reduce them. In Australia there's been a lot of talk about carbon pricing and um, some positive and some negative but I think for the agriculture sector what we need to remember is that uh, the carbon farming initiative uh, remains in place and that will be ongoing. There is you know, bipartisan support for that um, and so that creates this ongoing incentive for farmers to look at their emissions and, and opportunities to reduce them. Peter Holding is changing his farming model to better suit the changing climate. He's a strong advocate for embracing new technologies and research to inform that change. When it comes to climate change with the sheep industry, I think the major issues of profit drivers are going to be the same as ever, and that is stocking rate and growth and the amount of meat you turn off or the amount of wool you turn off per hectare. So we are probably going to move to a feedlot, but the trouble with this area with feedlots is that we get extremely hot days, which are getting worse with climate change, so we can't do that in the summertime, and we're getting storms and bad weather in the wintertime, which is another issue. So we're going to move to an indoor shedded system that'll allow us to take the lambs away from their mothers at weaning, not have to keep the best pastures for them, so therefore we can run more ewes, and finish the lambs off in a more consistent manner all year round. So hopefully that will generate profit, and prevent some of the effects of climate change. But it isn't just regulations or push factors driving the change. Customers are now looking for food that has been created in a sustainable way. For producers, this is creating a pull factor at the other end of the supply chain. I think about a pull factor as being what do our customers want? If you look, um, say, to Europe, the major supermarket chains over there, and a great example is Sainsbury's, uh, have set themselves a target to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions associated with their sort of their own brand products, to reduce those emissions embodied in those products by 50% by 2020. So it's very ambitious targets, and the first step in that is they've, they've gone about quantifying the emissions in their supply chain, and that includes agricultural emissions. This could be a very, very you know, powerful force for producers to sit up and take notice to say some of our biggest customers are now talking about this and setting their own targets regardless of what government's doing. So maybe I need to understand you know, what my emissions are, what opportunities there are for reducing those in order to gain access to new clients and, and maybe maintain the customers that you already have. So I think there's a really um, interesting trend emerging that could, could transform 
the agricultural sector even faster than if there was a regulatory impost put upon them. More and more, large multinationals, including Rabobank, are also getting behind the push to become more sustainable. We think sustainability and sustainable development is very important for uh, primary production. Looking ahead in the future, looking ahead to the year 2050, when we will see 9 billion people on this planet with resources that will uh, also deplete over time. Uh, so we have to be careful. As a global player in the agricultural sector, they are seeing firsthand the shifts in production models around the world. I think you'll find a lot of farmers that want to do the right thing for the environment. I mean, that's what their business is anyway. They want to leave their property for future generations in a better state. But if they have an opportunity to actually do that and increase their productivity and increase their profitability, that's what we think what a sweet spot for our, for our clients and for our farmers is. There's a lot of information, there's a lot of knowledge out there. It needs to be shared actively. It needs to be discussed by farmers actively to actually come up to a wider uptake of practices that can actually improve production in the environment. The changes Peter Whip has introduced have already had a dramatic effect on his bottom line. Our emissions intensity is down by about 25%, uh, but at the same time our gross margin is up by about 180,000, which for us is, is probably the key to, to future survival. Farm 300 is a program initiated by Meat and Livestock Australia with the Department of Agriculture as part of their Extension and Outreach program. The three components of the program are to firstly make sure that all the latest R&D is available to producers and advisors through our website but also other publications. Secondly, there's a um, program where we're looking to make sure we upskill all as many service providers as we can and taking around 25 of those advisors to then work with 300 producers across the country um, through a process that will develop a, a plan specific to their business that will then subsequently improve their productivity but also mitigate greenhouse gas emissions.